another question regarding Azure DNS zones. So you configure the email.com zone in Azure DNS. You have an A record, which is called app. And this A record points to an app service that hosts a web application. And uh, you are required to do two things here. So the first one is to make sure that this application is available by using the domain name webapp.demo.com. And this new domain name needs to point to the public IP address of the app service. And the second thing is that whenever the domain app that demo.com is modified or deleted, you want to make sure that the DNS record for this new domain name is updated or deleted automatically. And so now you are required to tell which record set you would create. So you would create an A record set, an A alias record set, a C name alias record set or a C name record set. And what you'd like to do here is create an A alias record set because uh, for two reasons. So the first one is that this is a special record set that will allow you to create an alternative name for a record set in your domain zone. And this is different from CNAME because the alias record set will be updated or deleted. So the second requir requirement here, in case the target record set is modified or deleted. And you can only create an A alias record set that points to A for A or CNAME record types in an Azure DNS zone. Then you shouldn't use a CNAME um, alias record set because the custom domain name of your web application is represented by an A record, so you shouldn't forget this. And you should, uh, this is actually a detail you should pay attention to. And a CNAME alias record set can only point to another CNAME record set. So this is in contradiction. So this is actually the main difference from, C, uh, from an A uh, record set that will point to A for A and CNAME. All right. Um, and also another reason is that the value returned by a CNAME alias record set is a domain name and you are required to create a DNS record set that records, that returns an IPv4 address. So you are not required to return a domain name. And uh, so this means that you only need an A record set. All right, you shouldn't use only an A record set because the second requirement here will not be met. And also we already discussed CNAME record set is also not the correct answer because it will not actually answer to any of your requirements. And the answer here is pretty straightforward in Microsoft documentation under Azure DNS alias records overview and uh, you have all the explanation here and if you look at this at the second line they tell you that you can create an alias record set that references an Azure public IP address instead of an A record and your alias record set points to an Azure public IP address service instance dynamically. So as a result, the alias record set seamlessly updated itself during DNS resolution. And an alias record set is supporting, supported for the follow, following record types. So the three ones we already mentioned. The complexity for the next question, it comes from the fact that you get a lot of details uh, if you remember from my previous videos, they like to present, sometimes they like to present very, very complex use cases with lots of details. They try to make you go in all the directions. 
And in the end, in my opinion, the problem is not that complex, it's just that you need to maybe to analyze every scenario or try to go to the answer, know what's the exact answer and then ignore the whole rest. Because usually the problems and the details they present, they're not necessarily linked to each other. So if you don't, if you skip some details, I don't think it will make you fail for um, that question. Actually, this is my, this is the technique I used. It worked for me, so I can recommend you the same. All right, so we have two virtual networks, one and two, with different IP address ranges. Uh, each of them has um, a subnet one and two with this IP address ranges. There is a virtual machine inside every subnet. They are located in different regions, West Europe and North Europe, and there is a peering connection between VNet1 and VNet2. And the issue, so after this configuration, the issue is that you notice that when you try to do ping from virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 2, it fails. And the question, of course, is why? So this is the main problem, this is the configuration that you have made, but I simplified it a lot because you can expect for the exam, you can expect, for example, to get some PowerShell commands for the VNet implementation or for a subnet or for peering. You can also expect to have some PowerShell commands for firewalls, for example, or they can also give details about uh, virtual machines, what kind of um, OS they run on, and so on. So, uh, this kind of details. And in this case, actually, when you see that the ping from VM1 to VM2 fails and you have a peering connection, the first thing I recommend you to check is if the peering connection is on, on both sides, which is not the case here. Uh, it's only from VNet1 to VNet2. So obviously the correct answer is that you need to add the VNet peering from VNet2 to VNet1. So, um, so when you are trying to peer to VNet, you need to make sure that the peering connections are in both sides. This is a requirement for it to work. And also make sure in the portal that the peering status is connected. In this case, for example, as the peering is done only in one direction, the peering st status would be disabled. So this can be also a trick, of course, if they show this um, during the exam. If not, it's something uh, I think it's something quite uh, important to know as well. It can happen that you can that you get this uh, problem in real life as well. Then you can go further and check the other options they propose. For example, they say create an NSG and associate both subnets to it. Uh, this is not the correct answer because an NSG is used to filter network traffic, so it has nothing to do in here. They also say, uh, for example, modify the subnet. Uh, actually, to this is not uh, the the answer is not correct here, but uh, the idea here is to modify the subnet to address range. So instead of this one, um, actually, yeah, eventually add the correct address range. And this is uh, also not correct because, firstly, um, the actually the main condition for two VNets to be peered is that the address spaces not to overlap, which is not the case right here. So we have different side ranges, and um, there is no overlap over here. Okay. Then they say create a virtual network get gateway. 
in this case we use VNet peering, so the configuration is not to use virtual network gateway. This is another scenario, so it it cannot uh, be the case right here. Also, uh, move VM2 to the West Europe region. This also cannot be true because peering across Azure regions is supported. So we are talking about global virtual network peering. So peering between a region, between a region and another region is perfectly fine. And um, this one used the public IP address to connect is also not okay because VNet peering is, is set up to create connectivity using private IP addresses of the VMs. All right, so I think we covered everything. We'll go next to Microsoft documentation to have a look there as well. And what I want to show you here, so under virtual network peering, you can see there are two types of peering, virtual network peering, so connecting virtual networks within the same Azure region and global virtual network peering um, you can connect this across Azure regions. There are um, some benefits presented for virtual network peering, whether it's local or global, you can go through them. Uh, what we want to know here, though, is that, for example, you can apply NSGs in either virtual network to block access to other virtual networks or subnets. Um, so this is a short definition or a short uh, use case for NSGs. You can go, we already covered this in a previous video, so you can go and check again what the network uh, NSG is and also what um, VPN gateway is.